we dive right into an explosive debate. It's every parent's fear when they send their child off to college. What really happens in those dorms and at night after classes? Tonight, a rare and revealing look inside college life. Call it Campus Confidential, and we start with a case of campus love, one of those early relationships. But what happens when you realize that lover has done something horrible to you while you were sleeping? Tonight, the sleeping pills, the assault, and the girlfriend who records the boyfriend to catch him. Here's ABC's Cecilia Vega. 22-year-old Nikki Genthy is used to expressing her emotions through music. If I'm upset, I can play an angry piece, or if I'm, I'm sad, that I can play something more sad. Music has always been there for me. But tonight, she's coming forward with a story you rarely hear, talking with us about the most painful experience of her life. What's it feel like for you to be at this campus still? It's sad because I have so many memories of him and being here. These majestic mountains surround Ashland, Oregon. Just north of the California border, this small town with a hippie vibe prides itself on beer brewed locally and a Shakespeare festival known around the world. And right in the heart of town sits Southern Oregon University with its 6,000 students and prominent theater and music programs. SOU has a beautiful campus. It's very much a part of the life of the town. But recently, this little known college campus is making a name for itself for the way it's handling a nationwide problem. Accusations of campus rape and of sexual assault are increasing nationwide. Coming at a time when nearly 100 universities across the country are under federal investigation for mishandling allegations of sexual assault by students. An estimated one in five women has been sexually assaulted during her college years. A startling statistic that for Nikki is more than just a number, it's her story. As a sophomore music major, she meets vocalist Luke Smith, also in the program. We met when Luke was a freshman and I was a sophomore here at SOU, and we just, we clicked right away. We had similar personalities, being dorky and loud and silly and maybe a little misunderstood. Our friendship blossomed and we became best friends very quickly. And then it became romantic? You started yeah, dating? Yes, it did. It was a surprise, I think, for both of us. Months passed, the relationship progressed and became sexual. But soon, Luke was pressing Nikki to engage in a type of sex that she wasn't comfortable with. And one night last spring, she's sleeping over at Luke's apartment. Tell me what you remember about that night. We had tried watching a movie. I wasn't able to fall asleep. And so I decided to take a sleeping pill and he knew I was taking it and it wasn't working and it was getting really late and I had class early in the morning and so I took a second one and I fell asleep really quickly. Um, but I, I remember dozing off and he was still awake and he had started giving me a massage, which he did sometimes because it helped me relax. And I can remember hearing the rustling of his bed sheets. She says she remembers drifting in and out of consciousness. I remember being groggy and waking up once. He was sort of sitting up and it looked like he, he had just like moved away really quickly or something, but I was still so groggy and I was so out of it and I just asked him, you know, what's going on? And uh, he immediately said, you were having a night terror. Um, you can go back to sleep, it's okay. Her memories are foggy, but Nikki does recall one thing clearly the feeling of Luke pulling down on the waistband of her sweatpants. What he did next woke her abruptly. He flew off the bed and he jumped into the corner of his room. But I was still so groggy and confused and I just, I said, did something happen? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm really confused. I, I feel like something happened and he immediately denied it. It was uh, visceral, his response, he said, no. And how dare you accuse me of something like that? Luke had sodomized her, but under the cloud of those sleeping pills, Nikki wasn't sure exactly what had taken place. She even apologized to Luke. I felt guilty for accusing him of something which he was so convincing in saying he hadn't done that. In the weeks that followed, their relationship fell apart. After four months of dating, the couple broke up. But Nikki still struggled with unexplained and mounting anxiety whenever she was around Luke. Not having yet known what had happened to you, 
What was that time like for you? My brain and my body were processing a trauma that I didn't even fully realize had happened yet. So it was not good. Nikki says she was suffering from depression. Her grades dropped and she couldn't sleep. Hoping to reconcile some of her feelings, Nikki wrote Luke a letter. She says after reading it to him, Luke dropped a bombshell. He said, do you remember that night that you took the sleeping medication? And he said, well, I lied to you that night. And while you were sleeping, I, I took advantage of you. I was touching you inappropriately while you were sleeping. The words were searing, but now Nikki finally knew what happened that night. It may have explained her feelings of trauma, but it wasn't helping her cope. Hi. Hi. And so that's why I came here to the Women's Resource Center, and I, I walked in and verbatim told them what he told me, and they, they said, yes, this is assault, you've been raped. She wrote Carrie's number on it. And this is where Nikki Genthy's story is different from those countless other survivors of campus sexual assault. She's referred to Angela Fleischer, a confidential advisor, part of an innovative program here called You Have Options. No person is told about the report until a victim is ready for that information to be known. The program lets the victim make all the choices. Will she pursue an investigation? Will she help police ID and apprehend her attacker? And most importantly, will she play an active role in proving his guilt? And she was almost immediately ready to seek out support from uh, the police. <laughs> most survivors are not so quick to say, yes, I want to seek out the police as, as Nikki was. Detective Carrie Hull met Nikki and Fleischer at the Ashland Police Department, ushering them into a specially designated interview room, decorated to put victims at ease. Carrie, hi. What was it like walking into the police department to have this conversation? So surreal. My hands are sweating. Um, Angela went with me, and I met Detective Carrie Hull. And I was so scared, I thought that she was going to start bombarding me with questions. So where do you think would be the best place to start? So I was really afraid, and then we just had a, a very natural conversation, and it was slow, and I was in control. But Detective Hull knew this would be a challenging case. She doesn't even have the memory fully of the assault. You know, there wasn't anybody else in that room except her and Luke. That was the key. Luke's earlier admission to Nikki would never be enough. So Detective Hull makes a bold suggestion. I instantly thought of a spy movie. I thought this is the weirdest thing I've ever been asked to do. Nikki was asked to lure her ex-boyfriend back to her apartment to get another confession, but this time on tape. When we come back... Oh my gosh, don't mess this up. Watch how Nikki sets the trap to get him to admit his crime. We came over and put the multiple recording devices in her, in the living area that she was the most comfortable with. Come in. Next, 